welcome to Something to Talk About. I could not be happier about this episode because it is all about giving thanks. And I could not have chosen a better subject than my friend Juanita Bloss from Island Girl Power, probably one of my most favorite uh, heroes in uh, the world of nonprofit, along with your colleague, Carlotta Leon Guerrero from the Azuna <laughs> Foundation. But just you personally and what you have brought to this community through the through these young girls. I don't know how many how many years has this been. You must already have like a graduating class. We have been doing this for 17 years, and wow. um, I I have in attendance a young girl that her mother um, attended Island Girl Power wow. um, back in the early I days. I think that makes you feel old or makes you gratified, mm -hmm. but, but a little bit both, of both. Both, but it's, a, but it's a cool feeling, right? 17 years. Mm -hmm. See, now, here's the thing. Azuna Foundation and the Island Girl Power, I think, are pioneers in this movement Absolutely. toward empowering. And I, I know that's like the word empowering, but it, it's a heavy word mm -hmm. and a lot of people use it, but I don't take it lightly at all. And I think you don't either as a, as a woman who has raised, how many girls? Uh, five daughters and a son. Yeah. And a son. Who, is, who grew up in Island Girl Power, oh, by the way. Mm -hmm. How old is he now? He's seven. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you, you brought to the forefront, you know, something that was unpopular to want to see. Right. Right? You're, you were out in Dedeville, you know, not an attractive neighborhood. We picked it. You picked it. <laughs> you, and, and you did that because this is where you were going to find the girls that needed the help the most? Well, also because we wanted to be in the community and we wanted to impact um, a lot of the um, the areas that you know are struggling with a lot of uh, social economic issues, um, the the social issues that go through the whole island, um, and Dadado seemed like the the perfect place. And this is this is still a pilot program, and we want to take what we're doing in Dadado and bring it to any village, any island, um, because it's not just a girls program. People have a hard time grasping the concept. They understand Island Girl Power and um, they don't really understand the Corazon e Seng Song. Our compound in Dedero is called Corazon e Seng Song. E Seng Song is village, Corazon is heart, mm -hmm. so the heart of the village. And in order to uh, inspire the community, to better empower the girls. Yeah. And so we need to grow a community of caring people and we'll put this Corazon e Seng Song into any village on any island and try to bring back the sense of community. Well, you plopped down in the middle of this Ensong Road, mm -hmm. you know, this this structure. I mean, it was, uh, I know the work that went into trying to identify the spot mm -hmm. and then, tr you know, there was the house that was really, at the time, really not much more. Nobody I mean, wanted it. I yeah. mean, it was, it was dilapidated. Um, it was old staff housing. Um, thanks to Guam Housing and now Gora, um, they located us there and we expanded in 2014. Um, we were able to get four units there and make it a compound, a, a, a kind of a community within a community. And we're expand, every single building has a theme for what its purpose is in this mini village. Um, and we really do a lot to help, not just the girls, the families, um, <clears throat> people needing community service for public health, for Gora. And yes, also some probation students, um, teenagers and adults. Um, we're very careful about the people we bring in the compound, giving them a chance to have a second chance, um, helping us to maintain the parks, helping us to maintain the facility, giving them a place to feel proud to be in the community. Well, I'm sure that in the early days you were met with a little bit of resistance, being plopped into mm -hmm you know, a, a home that really was not very attractive and trying to lure people there. You were taking, and at the time the concentration was young girls. Yeah. Taking them from their homes in the area right. and trying to convince them that this was a safe haven. Right. 
And um, were you met with resistance by family? I think of these girls or I think fathers. No, just a, um, maybe a misunderstanding of what our intentions were. Um, you know, there's always the individuals that say uh, feminist groups and you know. Um, extremisms and and all of that and and really it's about respect and community and it's about male and female volunteers coming together and putting forth their best effort yeah. and doing what is right it's not always easy but um, bringing them to the center yeah and outreaching to the community it's not just um, um, abused and neglected and struggling kids and families this is a facility and, and a program for the whole community yeah to, I mean was to uplift no matter what the circumstances yeah, are yeah so but at the same time mm -hmm. you know we're, we're, we're talking about a very defined group of young girls mm -hmm. that uh, I'm sure who came from uh, cultures and uh, family makeup where empowering a little girl to be a leader was not in the family plan. <laughs> they had to stay home and watch the little yeah. sisters and brothers, right? Yeah, yeah. And so bringing them into a community center type of thing, um, teaching them cooking classes and nutrition, um, teaching them how to cook um, cultural foods, um, how to harvest the dagu, how to cook it, you know, how to do the preparation. <clears throat> And, um, and how to use herbs that we can grow around around us and not purchase. Um, those kind of things families found a value in. Um, bringing people into teacher cooking class um, that, that involved more like a home ec feeling. Um, you're not teaching them to cook in a restaurant, you're teaching them to prepare food for their family and you're teaching it from the heart. You know, mm. you're teaching them how to, how to prepare that meal that is gonna nourish their family members. And then yeah. art, chess, dance, gardening. Um, we have such a crazy variety of activities. We have a music room. And, and some of the Sorensen ladies come to, come to help us with, uh, with the role modeling. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful combination of try your hand at different things so you'll know what, what reaches your passion, what, what makes you excited. You, you have clearly, though, developed this, this other maturity toward this experience than you did 17 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had to grow into it because the whole thing was being formed as you were also leading it. So although you had this vision, there was a, a, a great amount of learning that you had, right? About um, the community or about This whole thing, I had to learn. I had to learn how to be a public speaker. Um, I had to learn how to not be in the background and put myself forward so that people know who run, who are, who's running the program. And also to be able to um, define how these, these activities will help the girls to develop their self-esteem and confidence, um, but also to teach them how to be advocates, to teach them how to be change makers. We need them to be change makers. Mm -hmm. The community needs this this boost of, of positivity. Um, and, and we've been developing it, you know. Who who along the way, because we <laughs> this is a this is a show about thankfulness oh my goodness and you've had 17 years of success I mean it <laughs> took a long time to get to where you are but I'm pretty sure that there are so many people it's just um, couldn't have done it alone of course um, I've kind of been the face of the program but uh, there have been companies that have come forward and and allowed us to continue um, like you said those old buildings if it wasn't for people you know in the community like m80 and Cybertech and Fence Masters and and now um, Pacific Rim came and fixed our roof. Mm -hmm. We were literally leaking inside the facility when it rained, and uh, they came and, and took care of our roof in the matter of a week. Um, you know, and and just putting forth the the gratitude to all these companies, um, Docomo and United Airlines, and um, pitching in in ways that are not commonly acknowledged mm -hmm. you know they don't they don't want they don't want the big hoorah a lot of times they'll just do the help um, Guam Home Center um, we've had people helping with just the community gardens just the nature park they'll take a certain part of the program and enhance it and and without that you know where are you um, all the nonprofits that we really really have a beautiful collaboration with <clears throat> 
I've always believed that you don't use the word collaboration lightly either. Mm -hmm. um, we believe in working collaboratively with our partners. Um, when we have a Sexual Assault 101 class for our volunteers, it's done by the professionals. It's done by Vero, by Healing Hearts, by the you AG's office. You get everybody, office. all the expertise right. to, to do this. And we are trained, all of our managers, all of the, um, the core staff, um, and I say that lightly now because we're all volunteers again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're all assist and safe talk trained. So they are suicide prevention and interventionist. There's a lot. There's a lot going on and there's a lot to be thankful for. When we come <laughs> back after this break, a big to do oh, coming yes. up to celebrate those who have been behind Island Girl Power. We'll talk to Juanita Bloss with more Island Girl Power thank yous after this. <laughs> We are celebrating Thanksgiving and we are grateful for a lot of people. And my guest today is Juanita Bloss, 17 years worth of people. I'm sure that you are grateful too. And I'm not gonna put you on the spot because it's very difficult to say thank you to everybody. But there is a big thank you concert and mm -hmm. then coming up. And uh, this is the Power of Thanks. It's a concert and silent auction. I know you guys don't do a lot of these things, so this is kind of a big deal. Yeah, this is our second annual. Okay. And so we I did it. I shall hold this up while you talk it over. Okay, well, um, this is our second annual, and um, we, um, we came about this because of Kathy Cruz. Um, one music mom. She wanted to find a way to contribute, find a way to have musicians in the community give to our our program to to show to show their appreciation for what we do and nice. a way to fundraise. And so the concert in itself mm -hmm. is amazing. We have um, headliners. You know, we have uh, the dolls. We have um, Micro Child with the McManus Trio. Mm -hmm. um, we have El Tidegui, and we have a group with the uh, cellos. They're wow. called Hello Cello. And then there are more musicians coming on board as as it gets closer to the event. Um, but just the music alone is. Is, is really you know what we started off with <clears throat> last year we had our event at Carmen's I remember that and it was uh, Rachel Estevez who wrote that great song mm -hmm. the girls um, had written a song and um, just be you and power 98 featured it you know mm -hmm. and so we were very happy with the with the group that did that um, we had a silent auction in the background mm -hmm. and it was really amazing things um, but this year we have this a uh, sizable contribution and and a lot of items that we've set aside uh, and the silent auction is 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 almost overpowering um, we have collections of silver um, Christopher um, silver and China and wow. um, vintage jewelry that we're just uncovering from this donation um, we have historical documents half a day magazines from the oh 1960s wow. from the 1960s and there's a Palau Festival of the Arts uh, booklet you know from the 1960s as well we have cloisonne you know okay. and um, camera sets 35 millimeter camera sets and um, this here is a piece of art from Lisa Nicholas. Okay. Um, it's it's very large. It's like a three by six, mm -hmm. um, and it was painted for Island Girl Power. It was painted for us to fundraise, and um, that's being auctioned off as well. I'm, con I'm I think this is cool. <laughs> you have the larger picture of it. Check this out. Look, check this out. You got to tell the story about that. Okay. One. This is so. This is donated by the uh, Guam Contractors Association Trades Academy, and um, they had house. constructed a mini house. So you know those tiny home specials? Um, any child would be overwhelmed so by the awesome. house. Yeah. Um, you can fit a cot in there, I checked. You know, yeah, lo yeah, yeah. we're local sizing, okay? Okay, okay. So um, you could uh, uh, use it for a playhouse. Um, you can have it as a mini house. It's eight by eight by nine feet tall with fiberglass roof oh shingles gosh. on it and treated wood base. You could actually fit like a bed in there. And, a and, small um, bed or something. He, right. uh, Trades Academy, they told me that this is all typhoon proofed. Really? And so it's reinforced and angle I irons. I want that. I can stand up in there. <laughs> that could be my backyard. So this, house. this yeah. alone is retail valued at $10,000. Wow. 
and um, we're doing the silent auction at half the retail. Okay. Minimum bid. Okay. Yeah, so we really, really, really want to say thank you to the Trades Academy because um, it'll give us a chance to, to fundraise some substantial funds for the program. That's really awesome. Yeah. And that, this is a, like one of the bigger prizes. This is the big this grand prize. This is probably, um, probably the, the most sizable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, sizable. No, okay, sizable. <laughs> but you're just going to have this. The, the house we'll is actually going to be up there? Oh. We'll have a photo and um, we'll take care of transporting it to the, the winners. The winners. Home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the event is on. Sunday, mm -hmm. November 20 25th. 5th. Okay. The Sunday after Thanksgiving. So okay. if you didn't really have your fill of turkey, uh -huh. there will be a meal. Oh, a yeah. Thanksgiving a, whole, meal. a whole Thanksgiving right. We're dinner. We're doing the Thanksgiving meal. The lunch? A lunch. Sorry about right. that. Because it's from um, 12 to 4 this event. Yeah. Right. And uh, Callie's Cakery is Ooh. doing the meal for us. Okay. And uh, she's given us a really wonderful price. And we're able to break bread and, and bring people together, have a meal have a concert, have a silent auction. So much fun. And 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 a raffle drawing. Oh, okay. Um, and people can get free raffle tickets by bringing a unwrapped new toy for Toys for Tots. Okay. Well, you're just mixing everything in there. Mine as well. Uh, it is it is a it is a charitable organization trying to give back to other charitable organizations. Yeah, and um well, I like to feature the the raffle drawing. We're going to be raffling off our our plants from the center for uh, gift certificates and jewelry. Um, so if people want to walk away with a lemongrass or an aloe or oh. a medicinal plant, we have, no, not those medicinal plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have um, Mayana, which is an antibiotic plant. Okay. Um, and, and some other some other succulents. Okay. Um, those will be featured in the raffle portion of the, of the uh, event. Before we, before we let you go, in the past 17 years, a, a lot has happened. <coughs> uh, you've raised an entire family mm -hmm, mm -hmm. under this banner of Island Girl Power. Uh, I see pictures frequently on Facebook. Your daughters have grown up into, now you have grandchildren growing up in this structure of Island Girl Power. Do you think that from the time that you started doing this 17 years ago, it has had an impact on you and your daughters, most importantly, as they were witnessing this sort of miracle that you were performing. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I mean that when I say a right. miracle, because a lot of people wouldn't take on these girls. Right. Um, and uh, I think that the impact on me, um, I've really seen the world in a, in a different light. Um, people are so disenfranchised, they're so negative, they're so frustrated with the state of politics, the state of government, the state of their social issues. Um, and when you're surrounded by so many amazing people doing wonderful, amazing things for the program um, and for the community, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to be um, narrowly you know, viewing mm -hmm. the world, right. um, and I'm able to see that really the world is what you, what you see and what you put in front of you, and my daughters as well. You know, they they are growing up knowing that there's a choice, and they're not kind of stuck in the rut of being on Guam and and feeling like the world is closing in on them. Um, it's helped us to be able to navigate the everyday stuff. Um, my husband has contributed over the years to helping the facility stay mm -hmm. up to par, you know, um, donating uh, his aircon services or yeah. the honeydew list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the maintenance man. It kind of goes into yeah. the facility, and um, so you know, it's so your it's, whole family has had. Yeah, and recently, mom, mom has signed on. She's been retired at, uh, from TSA, mm -hmm. and she's been volunteering. We're talking about Simona Cushing, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Simona Cushing, mama, mama Janice Joplin, and uh, she uh, helped me with the donations that yeah. came in. We we took 30 loads out of a storage room. Um, um, and have been navigating through sorting the donations and that's just so cool and so it's it's an amazing work of heart yeah um, you can't put a monetary value, value on our time because we're working from here that's how everything starts is working from here and that's where you started I know this yeah. because I saw it happen I witnessed it thank you for everything in the community on behalf <laughs> of everybody who has watched this place grow up right thank you so much for that we want to take advantage of the time that we have left to go around our home once a week here for something to talk about to some of the staff 
that has helped us put this show together that you don't always see. Uh, we present to you our thank you to the staff and I think the management is here well, as well at King's Restaurant in Timuning, the home of something to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thankful for my family and my own babes. I love you guys and I thank you guys for always being there for me. I love you. I'm thankful for my family, of course, and I'm so thankful for my great coworkers, the Kings. I'm thankful for Kings for giving me opportunity to, you know, work, and of course my my friends, and I'm thankful for whatever I have in my life, you know. I'm thankful for my family, my friends, and wonderful people I work with. Uh, thankful for the family. Thank you for our supporters here at Kings. Thank you for a great team. And thank you to you guys for doing this. Right. 